On this episode of Overtime Arcade, we're going to get Frogger playing in this decrepit old cabinet. At least, <laughs> I hope. Overtime! Overtime. Okay, now, if you recall from a previous episode, this is the Frogger cabinet that I picked up from that college football frat house in Pennsylvania. Uh, and obviously, it's been converted to Caliber 50, uh, which is a rotary game. You know, I did a complete playthrough of that, uh, of that game uh, at the end of the pickup video, and uh, it didn't exactly blow me away. You know, it had those two green rotary joysticks that are kind of rare and sought after. I might have said this already, but when I mentioned on the Coin Jam podcast that I had picked up a Caliber 50 kit in a Frogger cabinet, I got contacted by my buddy Steve Laity, who goes by Kotru311. Uh, he's got the YouTube uh, channel uh, Mosaic Arcade. And uh, turns out that Caliber 50 was one of his grails. And so, you know, especially since the gameplay didn't blow me away at all, uh, we worked out a deal. I think I got him a good price. Uh, and I pulled the PCB and the joysticks and the harness uh, out of this cabinet and sent them uh, to him. I sold them uh, to Steve and I, I sent them to him in, in Vegas. And I know he's really excited to um, put that kit into, I think he's got a, a dynamo cabinet that he's going to set it up in. Because I bought this cabinet with the intention of converting it to a Frogger and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, you know, once I pulled that Caliber 50 kit out, what are we basically left with? Well, we've got this Wells Gardner K4600 monitor. That does work, you know, it needs a cap kit or whatever, but technically it is working. Uh, we've got a working um, switching power supply, and that's basically it. So I've got a, a lot of work here to do to get this thing back to a Frogger, and uh, I'm excited to, uh, to continue that process. Um, you know, we got to get the... We got to get a joystick and figure out something to do with the control panel and the wiring. And obviously we need a, a PCB for this thing and an art package. And uh, yeah, my goal in this episode is to at least get Frogger playing on that screen in this cabinet. So um, yeah. So what I've got over here to make that happen uh, is a couple of things. So uh, I'm going to go the JAMA route with this setup. So I've got another uh, JAMA harness from the real Bob Roberts. I've kind of you know taken the liberty of, of prepping it the way I want it. Um, so when you get the fully loaded uh, JAMA harness uh, from uh, Bob Roberts and Alice, hi Alice, um, you know, you get the, the edge connector housing and everything and, and all the wires are populated, but none of the wires have any sort of connectors at the end. So I've taken the lip, because you know, you never know exactly what you're going to need in a cabinet, right? So uh, I've taken the liberty of prepping this a little bit off camera. So uh, these are the uh, wires uh, for the control panel, you know, Frogger is very simple. It's got a, a one player and two player start buttons and then a, a four way joystick. So that's plus ground is really all you need to go to the uh, control panel. And I looked at the, the original wiring schematic um, for uh, uh, Frogger and it had this like 12 position Molex connector going to the uh, going to the control panel. So I don't know if this is the exact right connector, but I'm trying to make it as sort of similar as possible. Kill me. Um, I've got some extra uh, ground wires here that I'll probably end up using for like the, the coin door and the utility panel, that sort of thing. Uh, I've got a whole bundle of wires that I'm not gonna need at all for this installation. So these are all the player two controls. These are the player one buttons, some other odds and ends. You know, th also things like the lockout uh, coil, power for the lockout coils, coin counter, credit switches. I might eventually wire that up, but for now I'm just trying to get the game uh, playing. Uh, and then down below here, I've got my uh, speaker wire. I've got my video and sync connectors. I've got all the, the power uh, cables right there for you know, all the voltage that we need. So yeah, I think the harness is pretty much ready to go uh, into the cabinet. Uh, this is the joystick that I'm gonna use. You know, again, I got this in a big you know, bag, grab bag of, of used broken joysticks a while back. Uh, this is a tall, skinny Wicco, so it's the exact same uh, joystick that's used in Pango. So I recently did a Pango restoration and uh, this one is not nearly in as good shape. So this is the, there was two of these uh, in that bag and this is the uh, the one that's in rougher shape, but I think it'll work. Uh, one thing I want to do is clean all these leaf switches. I was trying to do some initial testing of them and they seem to be uh, quite dirty and probably, you know, to make this as quick as possible, I'll leave the wiring sort of intact and kind of, um, 
you know, crimp some new pins uh, onto the ends here and put it into the housing. That might not be eventually, I might redo the wiring, but again, this video is all about getting, uh, getting everything done quick and dirty so we can get Frogger playing as quickly as possible. And to that end, uh, like I said, I need a PCB and I've had a hard time finding a tested and working Frogger PCB for a decent price. I'm still on the hunt. So if you, you know, know where I can find one, please let me know. So in the meantime, I got a bit kit. Uh, this is a bit kit too. It's made by Crafty Mech, who is the same guy that makes the TPG test pattern generator that I, I have and I love. Um, if you saw my uh, holiday gift guide video, I did mention this briefly um, because Crafty Mech was running a, uh, a sale um, on most of his retailers for, you know, 10 bucks off of the TPG and 10 bucks off of the bit kit. And I've been wanting to get a bit kit for a while. And so I took advantage of that sale and uh, it just arrived from Mike's Arcade. So this is the PCB solution that I'm going to use uh, for now. It is a, a JAMA, you know, a PCB. So it'll plug right into the harness without any adapter or anything. Um, and yeah, we'll use this to play Frogger, you know, until I'm able to find uh, an original board set to uh, use instead. And if you're not familiar with the bit kit, basically it's an FPGA uh, arcade game board. Uh, and so it uses uh, an FPGA to emulate the original hardware. So FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, and it's basically a processor that can simulate or emulate other processors. And, um, you know, it's, it's used in the arcade hobby to, you know, simulate old uh, processors and old game hardware from, from back in the day. So it runs the original game ROMs. Um, but it emulates the, uh, the hardware uh, in the FPGA. So somewhat similar to a J-Rock, if you're familiar with that. Uh, Crafty Mech has been adding more and more and more games to the bit kit. It supports a number of both, you know, vertical and horizontal games, you know, with, uh, you know, again, a, a JAMA connection. And um, yeah, so really excited. Like I said, I've been meaning to get one of these for a while. And what's nice about this is because it supports so many different games, you know, over 100 games, I think, you know, having this adds a lot of flexibility to, you know, a lot of things that I'm working on. So for now, I'm going to use it for uh, the Frogger. But in the future, when I get a Frogger PCB, I can take this out and maybe use it in another project that I'm working on or have it use it as a backup PCB if one of my original uh, PCBs go down. So there's a bit of setup work that we're going to have to, to do to this. This is fresh, you know, out of the, uh, the shipping box. So uh, we'll do that in this video. But I think the first thing that I'm going to do, and I'll get up set, set up to do it, is cleaning the leaf switches uh, on the joystick. Okay, cleaning leaf switches on joysticks and buttons is something that you'll often find yourself having to do. I think I might have done this before on the channel, but just to kind of go over it, you know, a leaf switch is really, really a simple switch. It's just these two, you know, strips of, of metal with wires connected on the end. And they're kind of like, you know, leaves when they get uh, pushed together, there's little contacts at the end. So when those two pieces of metal make contact, they close the circuit connecting the two wires. And that's basically what a, a leaf switch is. And this older style, you know, leaf switch joystick has, you know, one in either direction for a four way joystick. And uh, yeah, so you pull the joystick in one direction and it cl uh, closes this leaf switch, closing the circuit and sending a signal to the game that that direction of the joystick has been uh, has been pressed. So these things do get dirty, right? They get oxidation, whatever grime uh, inside of them, and it's relatively easy to clean them. The most common way is to just take like a business card. This is actually an old cut up uh, Easter uh, card and just kind of, you know, squeezing, squeezing the contacts in between and dragging it out. And you can see some of the dirt already sort of um, coming. I, coming off, I like to um, take it a little bit of a step further. We'll remove the leaf switch. We don't have to desolder it. Don't want to lose this kind of spacer guard thing. Actuator, I don't know what it would technically be called. And I like to come in with a fiberglass scratch pen, like you've seen me use before to clean PCBs, and just kind of get in there, and hopefully this will show up on camera, get in there and kind of sweep off, scrape off any, uh, any you know, oxidation or carbon buildup or whatever and you can see it kind of there's like a powder that'll come off it's almost like you're sanding it and you going back and forth with this fiberglass scratch pen you see it's starting to get nice and shiny we'll do it on on both sides yeah you can see how dark that contact is uh, if it's showing up on camera and then with a few passes of the fiberglass scratch pen which is really just these fiberglass fibers and you kind of it's like an eraser 
they kind of wear off and you have to turn the crank on the base of the, the scratch pen to have more material come down. You got to watch because these little pieces of fiberglass go everywhere. You don't want to breathe them in and you don't even want them to kind of get lodged in your skin. It doesn't feel good, um, but that's come along nicely. So we'll get both sides nice and shiny and clean. All right, I'm happy with that. And then what I'll do is I'll take a Q-tip like so, and I'll spray a little bit of deoxit uh, electrical cleaner, electrical contact uh, cleaner. I'll spray a little bit onto my tip of my Q-tip. All right, and a little goes a long way, so you definitely don't need to overdo it with this. I did it over the trash can because it kind of goes everywhere. And I'm just going to come in here and put a little bit of deoxit on both sides of the leaf switch. All right. And then I come through with my business card or greeting card or whatever, and then I give it a couple swipes. All right. So that's looking nice and shiny. I'm going to go ahead and do it for all four uh, leaf switches on this joystick, and then I'll screw everything back in place. Uh, and also, let me show you a quick look at the control panel over here and kind of what I'm going to do. Uh, if the gimbal wants to follow. So there's way too many buttons on this thing of a couple different types, right? This was set up for Caliber 50, which is a two-player simultaneous rotary game. Uh, really, on the, the Frogger control panel, there should just be a joystick mounted in the middle. No buttons, nothing else on the top. And then uh, a one-player and two-player start buttons right here. So I think what I'm going to do, I don't know if these are exactly uh, correct, uh, but I believe the start buttons on Frogger should be blue. So I'm gonna grab these buttons, move them down here, remove all of the other ones. Uh, fortunately, these are, if I can show you, uh, most of these are leaf switch uh, buttons uh, on the underside here, except for these weird ones, um, but I'll put those to the side. So I'll take these two blue leaf switch uh, buttons, uh, I'll clean the leaf switches on them, and then I will um, move them down to the correct position at least, and I'll figure out some sort of uh, wiring and uh, we'll get it all kind of crimped up and plugged in here. So yeah, I'll crimp on uh, new pins onto the ends of the, uh, the joystick wires. I'll add some wiring uh, to the buttons and then we'll put it all, we'll plug all those pins uh, into this housing that will mate the uh, Molex connector uh, coming from the harness for the, uh, the control panel. So yeah, let me go do that, clean these joysticks, get everything set up, and then I'll, I'll show you uh, how everything turned out with that. Okay, making great progress here. I got all of the leaf switches on the joystick cleaned, put back together, uh, looking pretty good here. Uh, I mounted it temporarily onto the uh, control panel with just some you know, bolts and nuts and bolts and washers. This is not correct. It's not even in the right spot. You know, obviously on the control panel, we're gonna have to remove the, <laughs> the caliber 50 uh, control panel overlay and fix all these holes and all that stuff. So it's off to the side for now, but you can see the uh, original uh, hole uh, for the joystick is still right there in the center. Uh, I got the leaf switches for the uh, player one and two, or one player, two player start buttons cleaned. And I got those buttons uh, in place. I'm not sure if they're really the correct ones, but they'll work from now. Uh, I got everything wired up, uh, all of the Wires from the uh, joystick uh, go to this 12 position Molex. Um, I've got new wires for the signal from the uh, one player and two player start buttons going to the Molex and I've kind of daisy chained uh, the ground together. I double checked and the original schematics only had one ground uh, position, one ground pin uh, on this uh, 12 pin Molex. So I've got two wires crimped into the same uh, pin here, one going to the ground for the uh, joystick leaf switches and one for the um, the start buttons and so this other wire comes up here and again kind of daisy chains uh, the grounds of these two buttons together so that should be good and I think we are ready to go ahead and throw this <laughs> throw this harness into the cabinet so let me grab my screwdriver and I think this is all the stuff and we'll come over here and we'll get set up on the tripod, all right. And I think I mentioned this thing, this cabinet is absolutely filthy. <laughs> so, and I'm trying to do all of this, you know, really kind of quick and dirty. 
So I will eventually clean this. I'll get all the dust out and, and, and everything. But just for now, I threw <laughs> a piece of a cardboard box down just to uh, avoid getting myself filthy. I need to, you know, pull and recap the monitor, all that kind of stuff. What we can do, we can get started here and I want to test everything out. So uh, I've got my harness, like I mentioned, uh, there's quite a bit that I'm not going to be using. I believe this is the part side. So we'll kind of stick this like this. I think I'll have the uh, PCB kind of hang out down there. These wires I'll kind of grab onto. These are the ones that I'm not using. So kind of stick those on the bottom. And yeah, we're gonna go and wire this cabinet uh, up for JAMA. So, uh, and you know, every cabinet's a little bit different, what it needs, where things go. So kind of use your best judgment and figure out, you know, how to fish uh, the wires through. And as I mentioned before, I kind of prepared this harness with uh, uh, the stuff that I would need. So crimped on pins and you know, appropriate connectors to the ends of all the wires. So for example, uh, this bit of wires and uh, actually let me go uh, put some zip ties on this thing just to make it a little bit easier to uh, work with. All right, a handful of zip ties and we are back in action. <laughs> Say a little, uh, little cable management always goes a long way. So we'll stick that there. And uh, I also put the extra um, ground uh, wires that I'm not gonna need for now uh, into a little smaller baggie and put them inside the larger baggie that I've got all my unused wires in just to, you know, it's unlikely, but to prevent the possibility of um, accidentally making a connection between one of those shorts and another wire in there. So it's kind of double bagged, which is good. So uh, I fished the, uh, control panel wires through. There's sort of a slit underneath here to go to the front of the cabinet. And I got my larger bundle remaining here. Kind of manipulate this around. We got our power cables and our speaker wire and our video and sync uh, connectors. So kind of untangle these here. Sorry if this is not the most exciting thing. Now, a lot of folks out there have probably rewired a cabinet for JAMA, you know, a hundred times, but hey, if you've never done it before, uh, it could potentially be a little bit intimidating. So here are our video wires and uh, I'll plug these right into our uh, 4600. I'll be careful because it's on the daughter card and you don't want to knock the daughter card off its connectors. All right, I think that's on. And then our daughter card is, oh, huh, it had come unseated. <laughs> Funny, all right, so that's all plugged in. And our wires are kind of going all over the place. I will uh, clean up this mess a little bit later. So that's all, that's all video over there. So that's good. We've got to make room for our PCB, of course. Uh, we've got our power wires here. And uh, fortunately, I've got the colors right here to remember what goes to what. So brown is black, red is plus five, uh, blue is negative five, and orange is uh, 12. So let me kind of do this like this. And I'll probably have them all go off to the side here. All right. All right, and actually just to avoid having anything kind of uh, get pinched or whatever, I'm gonna come from, I'm gonna come with these wires from both sides. There we go, that's looking better. And we'll screw that down into our switching power supply. And I'm just reusing the one that was in the cabinet, right? Cause it's working. What's the sense in uh, not just using, using it if it works. So making sure both of the spade connectors are making good contact. There we go, so that's good. And then here, all right. So the ground wires are connected. This is our speaker wire, we'll stick that over there for a second. And what's next? Okay, why don't we do the 
negative five volts, which again is blue. Uh, right, that's just got one connector and it wasn't used before. I, don't, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of JAMA games don't actually use the negative five volts, but I connect it here just in case something needs it. All right, and what do we got now? We got 12, so we'll fish this kind of through here, right like that. All right, 12 volts are connected, and then finally we've got a couple bundles of red wires for our plus five volts. Stick them on like so. And if it wants to cooperate, come on. All right, pinch them together. All right, so we've got all of our power wires connected uh, from before the uh, AC uh, input lugs were connected. Uh, those just come, they actually come through the isolation transformer branch. The power comes from the wall into the isolation transformer, branches off and comes to the switcher. Uh, and then we've got the uh, field ground for the switcher going to this distribution block, which also has a fuse inside of it. So, um, ba -ba -ba, what do we got in this mess left? Uh, we've got our speaker wire, and uh, so Sega had this two-pin Molex connector uh, here, and I just grabbed a uh, an old one that I had to repurpose it, so make our connection like this, and uh, actually let's make it over here, and then I can tuck most of this wire, uh, get it out of the way, push it back in away from the power stuff, minimize interference, all right. Fish that through. And I twisted these wires together, which I've seen done a lot um, on speaker wires. I'm not an audiophile. I really don't know much about you know min minimizing interference or noise or whatever on on speaker wires, but I've seen that. So monkey see, monkey do, right? Um, got a lot of a lot of slack on the uh, video cables right there. All right, and uh, am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. We've got our video and sync wires. We've got our speaker. We've got our power connection. We've got our control panel. Let me actually drop the control panel on back onto the cabinet. So let's take you on a little journey with me over around here, past the bike rack. All right. Okay. Let's see. All right, uh, ba, ba, ba. I don't know if you'll be able to really see what I'm doing here. All right, so with the control panel, I'll fish out the matching Molex connector. And like I mentioned a couple times, I'm not connecting the coin door or the test panel, anything like that, which you know, I will eventually, but for now I just wanna get Frogger playing as quickly as possible. This video is gonna be a little bit late. So, uh, yeah, usually I release, uh, this will probably, maybe, hopefully, still make the, make it in time for release my normal time, uh, Sundays at three o'clock Eastern, all my new full length videos. But uh, I try to release everything to over, Overtime Arcade channel members uh, a day early. So members only early access is a perk of being a channel member, one of the many awesome perks you get for the low, low price of $1.99 per month. And I'm fishing around for my 60-in-1 uh, PCB right now just to do some testing. And uh, where would that thing be? There we go. Here's our... 60 and one crummy uh, JAMA PCB. Um, but yeah, so uh, for $1.99 a month, which works out to about seven cents a day, you get, not only do you get early access to all new videos, uh, you get a access to a monthly members only live stream, which is always a ton of fun. And you get uh, access to our members only private Discord server, which is really a kicking good time. 
Um, so if you're interested in learning more about, click on the uh, join button uh, down below. We've got a lot of new people uh, who just joined. And yeah, since the last video that I released, we got uh, four brand new channel members and one return channel member. So we got Wayne and Devin and Zoner69 and Michael Sepcott, all brand new channel members just signed up. And uh, Greg Quintiliano <laughs> came back. I think he had dropped, but uh, came back. He uh, regretted his decision uh, to leave the Overtime Arcade channel membership horde. And, and we're, we'd love to, uh, to have him back. And yeah, Zoner uh, is actually uh, the one that won the, uh, the promotion that I really wasn't allowed to talk about on YouTube. But uh, congrats to Zoner. I still need to put his prize in the mail, but uh, yeah. So I stuck a 16 one in this uh, just for testing, right? Uh, I wanna make sure we've got good clean voltage uh, going to the PCB before I stick my you know, brand new uh, BitKit 2 uh, in there. So let's go ahead and get uh, set up for testing. We've got our multimeter set to DC volts and I just wanna check the output of the power supply, just to make sure, just to make sure that we've got the correct voltage coming out. Okay, let's see if we can grab onto the ground that way. Nope, I'll do it by hand, which is fine. And we need to plug this sucker in. So fingers crossed that everything's working and nothing explodes in my face. It's never happened before, but there's a first time for everything as they say. So. Cabinet is plugged in. I will be turning on the cabinet with the uh, interlock switch, which is right up here on your screen. And I will put my multimeter probes like so on the uh, five volts and the ground, positive five volts and ground. And uh, here we go, three, two, one. Uh, 5.13, call 5.14. I'm okay with that, tiny bit high, but that's, I think fine. And we'll test the other voltages. Uh, negative five is about negative 5.2 and 12 volts is about 12.8, which is fine. And let me just take a look at the screen to make sure the monitor is coming up. Uh, it's upside down and the sync is off or sync is incorrect. Um, that's okay. So, uh, I believe there's some sort of setting in the bit kit to uh, deal with that. So yeah, let me pull all this out. We'll get the bit kit ready to go and then we'll be uh, all set to actually install and set up the bit kit uh, board itself. Okay, I've got my computer all set to uh, use the bit kit app to manage my new bit kit too. I'll go ahead and plug the bit kit itself into the JAMA harness and this thing is tiny. It's like half the size of a 60 in one, but a lot more powerful. Uh, I'll come around uh, to the front of the cabinet just so that you can see what comes up on the screen. I am expecting it to be upside down because Sega did this sort of weird thing uh, with, their, with their games, like the yoke or whatever is kind of flipped or something. So uh, we'll set the tripod for that. Might have to mess with the sync connection too, but I'll go ahead and plug the cabinet power cord in. And I'll, I'll actually pull, <laughs> let me pull this back a little bit just so that the, the power cord does not become a tripping hazard. There we go. Point you up front at the front of the screen and three, two, one, pull in the interlock. Okay, uh, the lights are on, on the big kit, there's two LEDs, one for uh, power, which is a solid green, and one for status, which is blinking a little bit. And, uh, huh. It's not really what I'm expecting to see. All right, that's more like it. <laughs> and I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. All I did was power cycle it. I had it, uh, I, I double checked the voltage, everything was good. And when I came around to the front, uh, the bit kit has booted up uh, successfully. Let me come and find the uh, sink. The vertical sink needs a little, 
little love here, see if I can remember exactly where that is on the 4600. All right, it's that big knob. <laughs> Let me get my Dell's Arcade. I don't know what do you call this? He's actually started shipping them now. He made a few for, because uh, Dell is a channel member of Overtime Arcade, and uh, he made a few for some of the other channel members who have been asking about it. Let's see if I can position this optimally. Okay, let me try the vertical hold pot. That looks pretty good, right? Okay, yeah, all right. Saw the Crafty Mech logo. Good stuff, good stuff. Let's get all this out of the way. And uh, yeah, we do a lot. Here's the Crafty Mech logo. We do a lot with the BitKit, uh, with the BitKit app. Uh, works on PC, works on Mac, works on Android. And uh, Let's see, I think if I hit player two. Uh, supposed to be getting into. Okay, I was chasing my tail for the last couple of minutes because I couldn't get any sort of control inputs uh, to the bit kit. Same thing with the uh, 60 in one, so it wasn't a, a bit kit problem at all. And uh, I think there maybe is something wrong with uh, one of the ground positions on the harness, the one that I was using uh, for the, the ground running to the control panel. So grabbed another one of those uh, unused ground wires and uh, jumped that to one of the grounding points on the control panel. And uh, as you can see, I now have uh, control. So we can go into, and I'm just using the joystick and the start buttons uh, as the controls here for the bit kit. We're gonna go into system. We will go down to bit kit. Uh, uh, app. We wanted to use a Wi-Fi connection. I have a little degaussing issue here. And uh, we'll hit restart connection and reboot now. Yes. And uh, the bit kit should reboot. And I should see on my laptop. Actually, let me take you over to my laptop here. Whoa, we're bumping into stuff with the tripod. And uh, here we are right here at my MacBook, uh, those lights are giving a whole bunch of glare. Maybe that's better. All right, so we'll go down to, this is what you see when you first load it up. We'll go to connect and it says, open your Wi-Fi settings and switch to the BitKit Wi-Fi network. The password should be, actually I'll copy and paste it from the instructions, BitKit2, we'll join it and then we'll come back to our app here once it's fully connected. Click OK. Here we go. We are connected <laughs> from the Mac app to the BitKit. We'll look at what the instructions uh, say next. All right, we're connected, connected. Uh, so we should be able to go in and do some setup. We'll see if there's any updates available. Click on update. Uh, there's a new BIOS, okay? So let me update the BIOS real quick. And uh, while that's running, I'll, I'll let that run and then jump back in uh, when it's all done. Okay, we're back in the BitKit app. I will reconnect. I'll hit okay. And we're good, go to updates. BIOS is up to date. There is a new firmware version. So let's see what up to, up options say. Oh, all, whichever cores uh, we want to, we'll keep all of them. And uh, we'll go ahead and update the firmware. That's really fast, okay. Oh, one of 23. All right, let me go and let this run and then I'll come back and show you once, uh, once this is complete. And we're just wrapping up with the 23rd file of the firmware update. And uh, I think we are good to go. We just take a look back on the screen and uh, yep, BitKit is running. So we should be able to go back and uh, let's see, 
uh, I want to add some games. So click on games, add a zip. Okay, I think I got to figure it out now. <laughs> Hopefully I can hit this and it'll be good. There we go. All right, so we've got our game installed. All right, we're figuring this all out together. <laughs> I've never done this before, so I think we're good. We're adding one game. Uh, we got the, uh, the zip file loaded. It passed the checks. The first zip file that I downloaded from the first site, I don't know if it was a partial main zip file, whatever. I don't know. I got it working now. We're good to go. And I should be able to hit sync. And uh, it's uploading the game to the bit kit. And uh, game list has been synced. All right. So I think there's really not much uh, to do over here. So I can hit disconnect. And we will come back. Bumping everything with the tripod, we'll come back to the front of the cabinet and we'll take a look. Look at that. <laughs> We've got a Frogger splash screen. I don't know if it does this for all the different uh, supported BitKit games. There's a little splash screen, but that's cool. Let me change the, uh, the refresh rate on my camera. Okay, that should look better now. Uh, everything is dirty. The, the tube is dirty. The glass is dirty. So it's probably a little bit hazy. We're going to go into the settings here and uh, see what we got. So in system, we've got uh, vertical cocktail. I want cocktail off. Cocktail off. Interesting. Yeah, we are not in cocktail mode. So vertical cocktail off star fields following attract. Yeah, so the credit sheet lets you hit the two player start button twice to add coins. We'll do that. Uh, game select last, what does that do? Slot one. Uh, let me check the instructions to see what that does. All right, that controls, you know, what game comes up first. So we'll leave that as last. Uh, enable all games. Okay, we'll go back here and we'll say games. Frogger, that's the only one. Blue boot slot gray disabled. Uh, lives enable boot off. We'll change that to on. And I think that tells us that Frogger is what it will boot into. So we can go back and back and hold on. And uh, let's see, controls, uh, test player one. All right, that's good. And uh, go back, video, what does that do? Flip screen, vertical position. I think we're good there for now. It actually kind of works as a little bit of a test pattern generator. So we'll hit save. All right, and I think what I wanna do now is turn it off and test to see if it boots directly to Frogger, which is what I want. So I pulled the interlock switch to turn the cabinet off and we will pull it to turn it back on. And here we've got the bit kit booting. And look at that, it goes right to Frogger. Holy smokes. Uh, we might need to mess with the uh, Actually, let me do it with this, um, the horizontal position. I don't know, should I do it on the monitor? Let's see if I can do the, hold both buttons down. Yeah, and reset it. And does that go back to, no. I think if I boot, holding down the player two start button, it should boot into the menu. So I'm holding the button down, just pulled the interlock. It's booting. No. Well, that added a credit and the sound's working. I kind of want to go back to the, I'm holding down the player one start now, seeing if that does anything. Yep. Holding player one down is what does it. So let's go down to 
video, and I want to move the image up a little bit. Vertical position four, seven, not one, two, three, four, maybe five is good. And we'll do that, save, and uh, let's reboot. And uh, maybe we can play, where's the volume? Uh, the volume's right on the, there's a pot right on the bit kit. Let's see what this looks like coming up. Yeah, I think we're pretty good on the image here. So let me, uh, let me get set up to actually do some gameplay video. All right, let's play a little bit of Frogger on the bit kit. Uh, and like I like I said, it has that sort of credit cheat, so I can just hit the player two or two player start button twice, and that adds a uh, credit onto the machine. So uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and get started? I'll press start, and uh, we'll play some Frogger. All right, I've actually been playing this quite a bit every time I go to uh, a arcade on location, as. Uh, <laughs> My buddy Russell, uh, channel member Russell, will attest to. Uh, I was out in uh, Colorado for work, and I he lives in Denver, and so we hung out at a couple of the uh, one-up arcade bars uh, in the Denver area, and then he came down to Colorado. Oh, man, I'm not paying attention. Uh, and he came to Colorado Springs. We went to a couple different places down there, and, uh, yeah, I took video of all of those places and uh, little video tours. So keep an eye out for the uh, video tours of those bars relatively soon. I think I got the sound up a little high. All right. Oh, I should have gone for that fly. But uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Frogger anytime I see it on location, kind of in preparation for this restoration. And uh, this is great that everything is working. There we go, there's first level complete. I only lost one frog. <laughs> All right, I think the speakers are a little scratchy too, but it could be the ROM set that I've got. All right, come on, come on log. All right. Usually if I get to 10,000, I know I'm having at least a somewhat, somewhat decent game. There we go, we got our little friend. All right, running low on time. Just barely made it. <laughs> I was taking way too long with that. Okay, should be talking more. I'm not. I'm trying to concentrate here, you guys. All right. Yeah. What do you think of this? George Costanza's favorite game from that famous episode of Seinfeld. There we go. That's the hardest part. The hardest spot to get to, all the way in the edge there. Okay, one last one here. Did I just earn a life? What was that? Okay, okay. There we go. All, fry, all five spots are filled with frogs. Yeah, but this is great. So what is left to do in this uh, restoration well, we gotta address the sides of the cabinet, strip the black paint off. Uh, I'll show you, it looks like some of the uh, original wood grain vinyl is poking through, so hopefully it's mostly intact down there. And uh, we'll be able to sort of recover the original stuff, which is always great. Okay, now we got our little companion frog. Piggybacking, oop. Yeah, we got the fly. 
and the frog. Is that like Mrs. Frogger? That's riding on our, taking a ride to the polywog or uh, the lily pad or whatever. I'm not, I'm not big on my amphibian terminology. I'll take this last one here. Alright, another frog companion. Ooh, just barely hanging on there. Oh, and I misjudged the jump. Charlie, what are you doing? What are you doing, Charlie? A snake on that one, which I don't think I can grab, right? And there's that dog. Another snake. I feel like I gotta just go for it, right? Yep. Didn't make it to 10,000. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, Frogger on the bit kit. Uh, showed you how to set it up and install it. Yeah, and over here on the side, I uh, noticed this is where some of the original wood grain vinyl is poking through. So yeah, we might be able to recover that. But uh, yeah, what do we need to do? Well, we need to uh, get a new art kit. Uh, I'm working on that. That should be on its way soon. I need to get a new marquee bulb or starter or ballast or something. We need to wire up the coin door. Yeah, and strip the paint on the sides. I'm kind of leaning towards just leaving the wood grain vinyl and not the optional frog or side art, which most cabinets didn't have back in the day. Yeah, finish up the wiring on the inside, uh, maybe eventually get a, you know, real Frogger PCB. But, you know, in the meantime, the Bit Kit is a fantastic uh, solution. Plays great, easy to set up. You can add all kinds of games to it. But yeah, if I ever get a, you know, legit Frogger PCB, I can take the Bit Kit out and use it for something else. Use it in another project, in another cabinet. So, yeah, not much work left to do. Oh, we need to definitely repair the control panel. Way too many holes on this thing that don't belong. So yeah, once we get a, uh, a new control panel overlay, um, we'll fix the holes, do all those repairs similar to what we did with Pango. And uh, yeah, get that all scored away. But guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Just a real quick one. Hope you enjoyed learning about the Bit Kit, seeing a little bit of Frogger. And uh, as always, I've been Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! <laughs>